So in this video, we're gonna learn how to install a Nest thermostat, basically on a combi boiler. And I'll show you what we're dealing with. We've got a fresh new ideal heating boiler installed and we just want to connect the spur up and wire it all in, basically via this spur. We're probably gonna replace that because look, that neon didn't even work anyway, if it's live. What is that, an old Baxi code? Yeah, it's not a Baxi boiler, so yeah, we'll get rid of that and possibly tidy that up as well. And fresh out the box, it says, please attach display base. Well, th that is this. Obviously, you can mount it to the wall. But what I would do is basically attach it and, well, firstly, plug your cable into there. And once that's plugged in, basically attach the thermostat and plug it in to charge it up because the last thing you want to do is come to get it all set up and running and the bleeding thing's flat so plug this in and stick it into the wall to charge it up once that base is on it should come on look it'll start working but obviously it's not registered to any account or any heat just yet so we've got to connect this up and then the thermostat's up and running and it will control, well, something. When you plug it in, it will say H1 heat link. Your thermostat can't connect to the heat link and it's trying to control it. Well, that's basically because it's sitting down there on the floor. Look. So we've got to connect that up. Yeah, first I've decided to do something about this. I've got to put this in some trunking just to make it look tidier. So it doesn't make my job look rubbish. All I want to do now is bend this in. Bend each side in. And then make this look a bit tidier. So let's just shove that on there. Shove that up. It's nice and neat. Oh, it bends off. Not if I push it on tight. And there we go. I need two hands, but yeah, that looks better. And as if it was made, that heat link can sit directly next to the spur. So that'll be spot on. Because I'll need a cable coming out of the spur. Hmm, possibly figure out how we're going to do it yet but i want to mount that there and to get this cover off just a little screw under there but what i will say with these nest thermostats make sure to use a correct size screwdriver because the last thing you want to do is be rounding all these screws off yeah because it's a nightmare to get tight then right what i've decided to do is mount it over this side because then the cables will be a bit tidier once they go into the boiler because there will be a small um, live neutral and earth going to the boiler and then one coming back to feed the nest thermostat that will be down there because we need a live neutral and earth and then obviously a signal wire for the thermostat and because this is plasterboard what I'm using is these little pigtails put these in there and they go in nice and easy. There we go. And that should be plenty to hold that nest heat link to the wall. I could have mounted it at the top here, but then I wouldn't be able to get that little screw to tighten it back up. So now we want to get this off to see what connections are inside the boiler for what cables we're going to need to go to the boiler and that is just these two screws undone here and to pop this off am i correct i'm no plumber yes there we go it's off and then we just want to pull this down obviously that will be fixed back i'm assuming so it will, yep we'll clear that good and then have a look what's in here We've got a bit of a wiring diagram there. So we want a live neutral and earth, 
and this one's to the stat. So there we go. There are your control wires for the stat and your live, neutral and earth. So what I've got here is a bit of five core. What we'll use. This one will help going back to the stat. One of these is not a cable. So we'll get that out. And then this will be a live neutral and earth going back to the spur that will give it its power. And we've got 0.75 mil cable in there because we're only going to be carrying three amps. That's all we need. Right, and this is what will go into the boiler. So then once we've got them into the boiler for the connections, what I'm going to do is put ferrules on the end to go into the boiler. It's just going to make it a lot neater in there. Well, basically like the rest of the cables, look, they've got ferrules on in there. So let's keep it the same to make it look nice and neat. And with these ferrules, all you want to do is put them on, get your little crimper. Ooh, there we go. And crimp them up. And then that one will hold it on there, not coming off. The reason that I'll put the blue ones on there is because that one's got two coming in. Two earths, two new... Oh, I haven't crimped that one. <laughs> two earths, two neutrals and two lives. So then they're secure when they go into the terminal block. And there we go. They're all in there nice and neat. The earth, neutral, live. And then the two control wires with a bit of sleeving on to identify that they're live control wires. Just in case any dingbat comes along and doesn't understand. But it's good practice, I suppose, as well. Put that in there. And that looks very neat. Do them up, clamp them up, and let's get the cable tidy back to the spur and the heat link. Right, I was going to put it in a bit of trunking, but it sort of goes at an angle down there. So I'm just going to bring it along, sweep it in nice and neat into this. And this can go in at this end to clamp onto the heat link because then it'll have plenty of room at the other end to be able to terminate so i just want to do this break the seal of that rubber and then pull this off there we go and obviously there's one in here that is not a cable so get rid of that make sure that you know that it's a bit of nylon because if you chop that black one out and you need it yeah your cable's going to be short so then that one can swoop nicely into there. And then let's take this off. Because this will clamp the cable into the heat link. I want that to go into there like so. And this should be long enough on the screws. To clamp it in. Have a look. There we go. Get it started. Yes. Get it started. Yes. So there we go. We've got plenty in there. And then it'll clamp it on. So basically it's going nowhere. No one's going to hang on it in a cupboard. But if something gets caught on it and pulls it out. Then yeah you're in trouble. There we go. And what I'm going to do with these ends again is put ferrules on. Just because they're stranded and it'll be easier to put into the terminations once we go into the terminations inside the heat link. And when you're putting these ferrules on, give the cable a bit of a twist and make sure that they go past the end. Because you can always cut them down. So for all these, use the cable so it'll crimp it on nice and tight. And then it'll go into the heat link or the termination 
a lot easier. Because the worst thing is when you've got a one strand, say on the neutral or the earth, that nips across and just touches the earth or just touches the neutral. Yeah, it's a bleeding nightmare. But I've just realised I forgot to put sleeving on them. So I'll have to get some sleeving and put on them ones. And then once you've got your ferrules on, you want to crimp them up. They're nice and tight on that. And you will have a little bit on the edge. So drop that off. I'm chopping these off a little bit closer because I know the terminations are small into the heat link. And I don't want them to stick out. So there we go. Looks like they come out of the factory. And then to find out where the terminations go, you've got the two at the end. That will be your neutral and your live. I've just figured out that there is no terminal for earth. So I'm going to have to put that in a way, go and get it in there somehow. And then you've got your one and two, which if you put it into there, it'll be normally on. But if you put it into two and three, that's what will switch the boiler on and off. So I'm going to use two and three. But then that T1 and T2, that is in case you can send a, a 12 volt supply out to the thermostat to keep it charged, which comes in handy when you're doing a different system where you're maybe replacing the thermostat for a wireless one. So you can keep the thermostat charged in that position rather than having to plug it into USB. And like I said before, make sure you've got a decent screwdriver because these terminals on here, so I mean, it doesn't fit in there. Once they're knackered, it does fit in there. They're hard to get better, like to be able to use again. So don't ruin the terminals. They're not fantastic. Right, so let's get this neutral. And then once they're all in there, nice and neat, you can form them up into there and then get the lid on. And then put the lid back on the boiler, I suppose. And then I've still got the earth connected to a way going there because it will still get the earth when it's connected from the main spur. So basically it will protect that cable. So that cable is still earthed for this nest heat link, even though there's no termination for it. And then this spur does come with a 13 amp fuse. Remember we were saying before about the size of the cable, we want to make sure that that has got a three amp fuse in there. That protects the nest and the boiler heating controls. Well, basically the circuit board inside the boiler. You don't want it to be 13 amps. So then turn her on. The boiler is coming on, we're firing up so we know we've got power to that. And then go back to your Nest thermostat and check again. There we go. Now it's looking for a heat link connection. And this got me a bit quick. That was, should I say, orange. Now it's turned green. So the equipment settings for the heat link. Heat link connected. Continue, so that's done. So then now what we want to do is make sure that it switches it off and on. So we turn it up and that gets a signal to turn the heating on. Now you can mount the thermostat anywhere in your house you want, but you will have to keep the cable connected. So whether you mount it with a 12 volt supply from the heat link, which you can do, or you can plug it in using the cable that it comes with.